From the home screen of JField, press Collect, then press Next, which takes us from the Collect Prepare screen to the Collect Action screen. Each of the gray outline tiles shown are active tiles, which, when pressed, takes the user to a deeper level of the software or to additional configuration settings. Let's explore some of these tiles now. First, let's look at the RTK fix status shown at the upper left of the screen. When pressed, we're taken to the RTK v6 status screen, which shows the user the status of the six engines that comprise the v6 RTK configuration of the Javide Triumph LS. Each of these tiles shows the current fixed status of the engine, as well as the number of satellites of GPS and GLONASS being tracked at the moment. Here the user can also reset the engines or reset tracking. The fixed status tile also indicates in real time the current fixed status of the receiver. Notice that the button is in green and the label fix is prominently displayed. The value to the right of the fixed status indicates the current real time RMS epic by epic of the receiver. The 6 slash 2 colon 2 represents six fixed engines currently with two engines required to be fixed before collection can be done. This is a user configurable option. The colon two indicates that I will require a minimum of two engines for a validation shot described in the verification video. And the value before the Hertz indicates that I'm operating currently in beast mode and shows the real time rate of corrections coming to the receiver. The top center button indicates the current tilt values from the internal tilt compensators of the receiver. The values in brackets indicate the current compass direction of the receiver receiver corrected for magnetic declination as well as the mapping angle or convergence angle of the current coordinate system projection. This button when pressed also accesses the quick action setup screen which is discussed in the quick action setup video. To the right of this button is the communication button. This shows the current status of the communications for corrections coming into the receiver. Currently, I'm receiving corrections from Wi-Fi, as indicated by the icon on the right side of the button. Next is the satellite status tile. Selecting this button accesses a new screen that gives critical information on satellites being tracked and used in the solution. The center of the screen is the map view. Pressing the button with the diagonal arrows enlarges the map screen to the full extent of the display. Below this is the review tile. Pressing this takes the user to a separate map screen that allows the user to review points that have been collected as well as connecting points with lines graphically. The button below this controls various zoom levels, including zoom extends. Here we see the base position shown in red, while the current rover position is shown with the green circle. Pressing the zoom selector once more takes the screen to a one-to-one -one aspect. Here, one unit on the screen is equal to one unit on the ground. Notice the change in the rover position, the green circle, as the coordinates change minutely at the bottom of the screen. On the right side of the screen, the tile labeled point takes the user to a screen enabling him or her to select what they are locating. By selecting line or curve, users can collect these features without the use of action codes. Lines are drawn between points as they are collected. The user can then connect a line to an existing point by using the find feature. Once the line has been finished, using the end segment or last to first will end the line as directed. The curve function automatically creates curves for every number of points specified by the user. Here, the curves are set to build on every three points. With the curve function selected, JField will build curves between every three points and continue to do so until the user switches off the curve function. All of this is done without any action coding by the user. 
The trajectory feature within JField is also very impressive. Users can select to collect a dot building a trajectory over an elapsed time, or by travel distance, or a combination of both, such that over an elapsed time or distance, whichever passes first, a point will be collected. Also, horizontal offline and vertical offline detect when the receiver has moved off alignment from the previous two dots and will take a shot once the tolerance has been exceeded. The option for accept if travel distance since last record is less than allows the user to stop to consider how he's going to proceed with the survey or to rest without the software continuing to record points. Connecting points with lines allows the user to actually connect lines between the dots that are recorded during the trajectory in order to create a path. Shift is a feature that allows the user to set up the base with an autonomous position and then, using the rover, collect a point on a known position. The software will then determine the translation between the base coordinates from autonomous to the base coordinates to the known position and apply the shift to all points within the base session. Pressing start records a point according to the user's configuration. Here, I've instructed the receiver to reset the engines a certain number of times. Once that number has been met, the receiver will then collect without resetting the engines for 600 epics. Once these epics have been collected, the receiver will then reset one last time to verify the original fix from the initial phase one resets. The white squares on the left and right of the center of the screen show the scatter plot of each epic as it's recorded 